Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Kberg Avalon helmet. The Avalon is Kberg's latest sports helmet, which sits in probably the most competitive price category of all, around about £150. This helmet costs from $134.99 up to $159.99 at the moment, with the lowest price being for plain colours and the highest for some of the graphic designs, which in some cases get pretty leery. Like the majority of Kberg's lids, this one runs a polycarbonate shell. That usually means a heavier helmet, but this size medium Avalon weighs 1,520 grams on our scales. That's not exactly a lightweight, but there are plenty of helmets with composite fiber shells that weigh a similar amount, so the weight on this helmet is actually pretty good. Venting is another key area where plastic shelled helmets tend to suffer in comparison to fiber shell helmets, and I wouldn't say the Avalon is the best vented helmet I've tried. I could feel the effects from opening the vents, but it's not the breeziest of lids I've tried. The first vent is on the chin, where opening this slider allows air to come through the top of the chin bar just here. Then there are two vents on top, which expose holes for air to go down and inside the helmet. Where many helmets have channels sculpted inside the impact liner that allow the incoming air to circulate once it's got inside the helmet, the Avalon just has a smooth impact liner. So air can enter at the front and it can leave from these two exhaust holes at the rear, but there's no way of really channeling it from front to back. So it's pretty rudimentary, the design on this helmet in a venting sense. The visor for the Avalon has a quick release mounting and it's pretty simple to fit, though I do find it a little bit fiddly and more time consuming than other helmets in this price category. It follows the recent trend by having a central lifting tab. It will stay slightly open to allow in some airflow here, and then pushing it down a bit harder on that tab will lock it on a lip on the chin bar. You'll see there are pins on the inside of the visor for an anti-mist insert, but the insert isn't included and you'll need to buy one of those separately. And it's not a pin lock insert either, it's a Fog City insert. If you've been riding for a good few years, then you'll probably remember the name Fog City. They made their name with self-adhesive visor inserts, but pretty much disappeared when Pinlock came along and did a superior job. Certainly in my opinion, they did a superior job anyway. Well, the Avalon is the first helmet I've come across that uses a pinned Fog City insert. So that famous old name is back in motorcycling. Whatever it's called, it costs an extra 25 quid. So if you want the anti-mist protection, that will bump the price range for this helmet up to 160 pounds for plain colors and 185 pounds for graphics. That puts it on a par with similar helmets such as Nolan's N87 and the Nex SX100R. So if you think this helmet represents a saving when you're doing your searches, it does as long as you don't need or want the anti-mist insert. The main visor is supported by an internal sun visor which you operate with this small lever just by the left ear. It's quite a shallow sun visor. And when I put this lid on, this cutout just here, the top of it sits higher than the bridge of my nose and then the lower rim around here is just below my eye line. For me, that means this helmet is best suited to people who are riding sports bikes because when you're riding a sports bike, your head is tilted down and your eyes look straight ahead. So you'll be looking through the center of the sun visor. On a naked bike, which is what I rode when I wore this helmet for this review, I found myself looking through the bottom of the visor in some cases. That gave me a distorted view of the bike's clocks and also meant I wasn't really getting the full shielding from the sun. What I had to do was I ended up rotating the helmet forward on my head to get around that issue. If you do opt for this lid, one other tip on the sun visor, give the lever a little extra push to make sure that it's locked fully down. That does drop the sun visor just by a few extra millimeters and when you've got something that's quite shallow like this, every millimeter counts. Also, the sun visor isn't protected against misting, but that issue is something the Avalon shares with quite a few helmets in this price category, so I won't go too heavy on my criticism of that. So let's move to the interior. It's fully removable for washing, and there's a chin curtain to cut down on drafts getting through to the inside of the helmet. There are recesses behind the cheek pads where you can tuck a pair of intercom speakers as well. The strap fastener is a micrometric buckle arrangement, which again is the most common type on helmets that cost this sort of money. This helmet is new and I don't have much customer feedback to help me on the noise front, but my experience on a Suzuki GSX-S 1000 naked bike was that this lid was actually pretty decent on that score. I always wear earplugs, I have an Auratech pair, and I didn't experience any undue noise from this lid while riding. 
So finally, let's cover sizing and approvals for the Avalon helmet. It comes in sizes extra small to extra large, and there are two shell sizes. The first shell size covers helmet sizes up to and including medium, while the bigger shell is used for large and extra large helmet sizes. It's approved to ECE 2205 for use on the road, but there's no ACU gold sticker, so you'll need a different helmet if you want to go racing or to do track days. As we make this video, there's no rating from the UK government's sharp scheme for this helmet, but it's only been around for a couple of months or so, so it's still a bit too new for a sharp rating, really. I hope that tells you everything you were hoping to find out about the Kberg Avalon helmet, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.